React 19 has introduced a bunch of hooks to work with form. The simplest one among them is use form status hook. The use form status hook help us to know the status of a form when it is submitted. Usually when you use a form, the form will have a bunch of form fields and a submit button. When you submit this form with the data, you might want to let your user know that this form is being submitted or it is pending to submit. User will get that feedback and they will wait, okay, there is something happening with your form. To go beyond that, you can also show certain kind of messages taking the data from the form data. Now doing all this thing used to be outside of the form. We had to manage all this thing with our own logic, be it for showing some kind of loading or pending state for the form submission or taking a data from the form and showing some kind of message. But now if you're using React, especially with React 19, you have a hook that is integrated with form to get you this information. Not only with React, even for the React based framework like Next.js, you can use this hook. So let's get into understanding what is this hook about, how to use it with few use cases and code, and also to talk about some common problems that people face even though this hook is so easy and straightforward to use. Here was a very, very simple form. So here's a form, it has an action, through action we can take an action, we can call a function and then inside the form there is a component called submit. Let us go inside this submit component. So here is a submit component that you see over here. The submit component is nothing but a very simple button. That button has a text called submit and it has certain kind of class names and you can see it is a submit button. So if I see this one in the UI, it will look like this. A pretty simple submit button but when you click on the submit button there is a magic happens just notice this there is a text called submitting in momentarily it comes the submitting text because that is when it is telling your user this form is being submitted now how is this thing happening let us go back to code once as you see over here we are using a hook called use form status this use form status gives us something called pending this is a state that signifies the submission state of the form which we are dealing with. Now where is this use form status coming from? If I just scroll over, I can see this use form status is coming from React DOM and this is part of React 19 RC at the moment of creating this video. Alright, so use form status gives us something called pending. Now taking this pending, we can do a lot of stuff. What I am doing, taking this pending I am making this particular button disable when the form is being submitted. When you hit the submit button on that moment, right? Until this particular function execution is over. Till that moment, this particular button is going to be disabled because the value of the pending will be true at that point of time, okay? And here I'm checking if the value of the pending is true, then I'm saying the button text should be submitting. Otherwise, the button text is as usual submit. So that means the value of this pending changes depending on the form's submission status. Now to see that, let me put a simple console.log pending over here. So the moment I put console.log pending, I see false, right? Now, if I hit the button over here right now, this one will gonna turn to true and then it will become false. Let's see that. So keep your eye over here, also here. This is false in the beginning. Now I'm going to hit the submit. You will see it becoming true. And while it was true, the state was changing to submitting and it turns to false again when the action execution is over and thus based on our logic, the button text come back to submit and the button is also gets enabled. Before we move forward, I just want to call out one thing that we are using an action, here we are using handle submit. This handle submit action can be anything, but for our demonstration, we are using a promise with a set timeout. So it means that it will wait for this given time, which is like one second before this particular promise gets resolved. Thus, this particular handle submit execution gets over. That's what is only for the demonstration purpose. Now to demonstrate it much more clearly, once you get a hold of this code, you can increase this time to play around with this code much, much better way. So you understood how use form status works. There is one more thing that use form status gives that is pretty important to play with the data. Let's see another example with that. Now let us take the example of this form where we have an input text box where user can type in something and then there is a submit button but the text is searched. So user is searching something. What they're searching, they can search for a movie. 
Let's search for a movie. My favorite movie is Spider-Man and I am going to search. Just notice what is happening. The moment I click on the search, searching and is saying searching for Spider-Man. Did you see that? Let me do it again. This time Batman and search, searching for Batman. So I was able to grab the particular data I have given while submitting this form and using that data, whether it is Spider-Man or Batman, I was able to show certain kind of feedback and the message to my user. I'm not writing my own special code, rather I'm making use of the same hook used from status to do this. Let's see the code. Again, there is a component. This time the component is called data usage. You can give any name. There's a very simple form again having an action and exactly the same action that we have written but this time instead of one second I have given the timer as two seconds so that it executes for a little longer for us to give a better demo. Then we have a submit as a component. Let's go inside submit. The submit component this time a little bigger because we have an input text box also along with the button. Last time we had only the button. Right now we have this input text box and along with that we also have the button just like before. But here there is one thing to notice. Last time we were getting only something called pending. Now we are also getting something called data. So that means use form status not only returns pending, it also returns the data that user have filled up while submitting the form. So basically you get back all the form data from this data value of use form status, which is really amazing. We'll see that what is data returning for us. Now I use this particular data and I try to check that inside data, if there is something called movie name, then I show that particular message that searching for movie name. But what is movie name? This connects directly to your form fields name attribute. So here I have an input box. In this input box, I have a name attribute and the name attribute value is the movie name. The same value movie name I can use now to retrieve the value of this input box whatever user have typed and then use that for my own purpose. Here I am using it for showing a message saying that searching for so and so movie name. Rest of the pieces exactly same like the last one. I have the pending already. So taking the pending I am doing searching and search because initially it will be false. When the form is being submitted it will turn to true. That time it will be showing searching and then when we have the data we grab the data and we are showing this over here. Now, for our own satisfaction, let us do console.log of pending and then along with that data. All right. So it is already initialized with false and null that you are seeing. But we'll see like when you submit the form, what happens. So let's get back to UI. All right. So you can see false and null over here. Let me go to Spider-Man again and search and let's see what gets printed over here. So I'm searching. I see like what is getting printed. I see true over here. Of course, the pending was false become true. The data was null. But while the pending become true means form is being submitted. I could grab the form data which is inside this object. If I expand that, if I expand that, I will be able to see this form data entries. And if I read the form data entries with the get method dot get passing the input variables name attributes value. I will be able to grab that particular value. So in this case, I had given Spider-Man. So to get Spider-Man, I have to do form data dot get the particular input elements. This input elements name attributes value I have to pass. Then I will get this back. So why I'm getting this data to see that in the code again. This is the this is the one responsible for this. I hope this is also clear. Now these are the two primary use cases for use form status, but still there are chances that you might make a critical mistakes and you don't get the desired result that you're looking for from use form status. So let's see the mistakes that you should not make. We have a similar example on the screen. So there is a form inside the form. There is a button. And again, we have used something called use form status, which we have seen twice. I have imported this from react DOM as usual. And then the form is having an action, exactly similar action, a promise with a set timeout to resolve after two seconds so that this form action execution completes. Using this pending state, I am turning this particular button text to submitting. Otherwise, it is submit always. Again, the enable disable part, which we have seen in last two examples. No changes. 
let's go to the ui and see how this one is responding now if i click on this what happened nothing really happening submit is not changing to submitting what is happening then where is the problem we are actually breaking two rules of use form status hook let's learn them the first rule is that the use form status hook must be called from a component that is inside the form so that means the use form status must be called from inside the form here use form status we are calling from outside of the form so that means we are breaking the rule number one now we cannot definitely call this hook inside the form over here so it means we have to create a component using the jsx that appears inside the form and within that component we have to call this particular hook if i go to the previous example any of the previous example for example this basic one we will see this is what we have done inside the form i have the submit component i have not called the use form status hook over here rather going inside the submit component this is where you will find this use form status hook is called this is where we are using this pending that is why it was working because use form status now inside this particular form not outside of the form which we have created over here so this is where we are violating the first rule of use form status and it's a very common mistake people might get into so make sure that you don't and the second one use form status will only return the status information of the parent form it will never return the status information of any other form that is rendered in the same component let me let me break it into so this use form status hook is enclosed inside this submit component now this submit component is enclosed inside this form so that means the submit components parent is this particular form as we have use form status inside this submit component the use form status will report the status of the form that is parent to this component which is this form now if we had another form inside this submit let's say we had another form over here use form status over here is never going to report the status from the form over here because this is what we try to replicate right in this scenario we had a use form status and then we had a form over here it is never ever reporting the status value correctly for this particular form because use form status is not enclosed by any parent form here which is the case in this case so these two rules let me repeat for the last time the first rule the use form status hook must be called form a component that is rendered inside a form which we have seen over here with this submit component second one use form status will only return status information for a parent form it will not return the status information for any other form that is rendered inside the same component where use form status is used hope this is clear that's all you need to know about use form status you know what if you like this video like my teaching please subscribe because that gives me a lot of good motivation to teach you with good content up next i'm going to discuss about another awesome hook from react 19 for form handling that you will like and remember for the long time take a great care of yourself we'll be back very soon and all this code that we have seen in the github and the link is in the description of this video so please guys make use of it thank you very much